Hi there. DeepMind and Google have created an AI that can write its own music. They used the Perceiver architecture for this and trained it on a big data set of symbolic piano music. I think this song here would fit well into an open world video game with a lot of exploration. And this is just the beginning of the first example. So this is not cherry picked by me. I think the quality is pretty good and you could imagine them using more instruments. The model that created this music used a symbolic music dataset to train a perceiver model. It was trained on 10,000 hours of transcribed YouTube piano music. They used a MIDI format. MIDI is used by musicians as a representation of music. In other words, it does not contain raw waveform audio data, but musical notation for a computer. So it contains basically the length, the instrument and tone at each time step. The model had 1024 latents and 24 self-attention layers. I'll talk more about what that means later. They only used full length pieces for training at once. This allowed perceiver to model an entire musical piece, not just a segment. It's crucial to understand that perceiver models can have a very large input size, but only a small latent size. It is also possible to use raw audio with this model because of this long context size. Now let's have a short look at how the perceiver architecture works. It's similar to the transformer architecture, particularly decoder only transformers like GPT-2 or 3. You should already understand how decoder transformers work if you want to understand perceivers. The only real difference between the two is that the first layer of the perceiver uses cross-attention instead of self-attention. That means that value and key are the full context, but query is only the most recent part. And query is the length of the latent size of the perceiver. The attention layer also uses masking for causality. Causality simply means that future values cannot be used to predict past values. So in a song, future notes cannot be used to predict the current or past notes. In order to create new music like this, the model is called iteratively to create the next tokens. These tokens are then added to the full input and the model is called again with the new full input. And this continues until the model predicts an end of sequence and finishes the song. Because it uses cross-attention in the first layer and then self-attention in all the following layers, the overall computation does only depend to a very small extent to the full size of the input. It mainly just depends on the latent size. So the very first layer, the amount of computation will increase linearly with the size of the full input. On the other hand, in all the other layers, it will remain constant for the same latent size. This is a way to get much larger amounts of data into a transformer. On the other hand, transformers can only handle a few thousand steps input size. The computation increases quadratically with the length of the input. So that's why you see big language models like GPT-3, Palm, Shinshida. They can only deal with a few thousand tokens and even fewer words, so maybe 1000 words. This type of design is especially useful for things like music, where you want to have a huge amount of context. You want the model to remember the style from the beginning of the song. So perceiver models are a variant of transformers that can handle very large input sizes. And that's why they can enter into domains that previously we would have thought a transformer can't handle because of the limited context size. That's why it can work on music, can even work on the raw waveform of the music. It's very interesting. On the other hand, sadly, they have not released this model to the public. You cannot create your own music. They have released the code for the perceiver autoregressive model, and they specified how the data looks like that they used from YouTube. They converted the um, piano music into MIDI, but they didn't release the model itself. So you would have to do it yourself. I think perceivers might be used for a lot of future modalities since they addressed the biggest drawback of the transformer, the attention context size. That being said, 
since the early tokens are not part of the query in the first attention layer, the model is probably somewhat biased towards the more recent tokens. So in that way, it might be a bit more similar to an LSDM. Another question is, how similar are the generated songs to the training set? It would be interesting to see if the YouTube algorithm sees any copyright infringement with these songs. You can find more examples using the link in the description. So what do you think about AI-generated music like this? <laughs>